Amid a barrage of missile and drone attacks in Kyiv overnight, Russia is making a major claim that it targeted and destroyed one of these, an American-made Patriot Air Missile Defense System. A U.S. official tells CNN it was likely damaged but not destroyed. Ukraine is not commenting, but it says that its air defenses worked against the large-scale attack, intercepting all 18 Russian missiles launched, including some of the most advanced in the Kremlin's arsenal. CNN's Nick Robertson is live for us in eastern Ukraine. Let's go there now. Nick, bring us up to speed on what we saw overnight in Kyiv. And if Russia's claim is true about this Patriot missile defense system, put that into context for us. What's the significance? Russia has always wanted to target Western equipment coming into Ukraine, and nothing would give it greater satisfaction than to take down the air defenses that Ukraine has put in place around the capital, Kyiv. They've been very effective. The Patriot missile system is the epitome of, of the strength of that defense, so Russia wants to target it. Indeed, Vitaly Klitschko, the mayor of Kyiv, has this evening said that he believes that this is what the Russians were trying to do, target that defense system, and that was the analysis last week as well. Russia gave uh, the defense systems, the air defense systems in and around Kyiv, an extreme test. Six hypersonic missiles fired from aircraft to the north of Kyiv, nine cruise missiles fired from ships in the Black Sea, and three of the Russia's large Iskander S-400 missiles fired to the east from Russian territory. Now, these uh, hypersonic Kinsale missiles go 10 times the speed of sound. So put it into context, Ukraine has said that it managed to defeat all the attacks on the city last night. Um, this is a, a significant accomplishment given what was fired at it. However, we don't have further details yet on the damage, uh, such as it may be, uh, to the Patriot system. Nick, we also want to get an update uh, from Bakhmut because the head of the Wagner paramilitary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, is making claims on social media that a U.S. citizen was killed in fighting there. We know that the fighting is very intense. We know that uh, it, the, the fighting there continues. We know that the death count and casualty count for both Ukrainian and Russian troops in that city is very high. We know that there are foreign fighters, including uh, American citizens among them, who have joined and supported the Ukrainians. Prigozhin, who has a track record for propaganda and less than full truth, has said that he has the body of an American citizen. Um, it's not clear if that's correct. He has said, though, that this citizen will be return to the United States uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with respect. He said that there will be a coffin, that he will be draped in the American flag, and that is because Prigozhin, he says, respects the fact that this man died fighting, not sleeping in a bed. Yeah, U.S. officials have made it clear that uh, citizens, U.S. citizens that are there are at their own risk, and it is exceedingly difficult to confirm whether they've been killed in battle. Nick Robertson from eastern Ukraine. David Sanger is a CNN political and national security analyst. He is also White House and national security correspondent for The New York Times and author of The Perfect Weapon. Uh, David, welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, great to see you again, John. OK, this was quite the diplomatic tour de force by Zelensky. Um, he got new commitments of military aid from Germany and France, as well as the UK. And he also got this. Here he is. This is this. One thing we will be doing starting actually relatively soon is uh, training of Ukrainian pilots. We have opened the door to training the pilots. Training can start right now. Is this kind of the precursor to actually getting the jets? Because neither France or Britain will supply the F-16s because they don't operate F-16s, but they, you know, they're willing to train them up in this. And the UK wants to be part of this fighter jet coalition, which is a group of nations committed to getting the F-16s for Ukraine. That's right. And uh, even if he doesn't ultimately get the planes, there's a psychological aid in making the Russians think that that could well be imminent. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that the, the long pole in the tent here has always been that if he did get uh, planes, he um, wouldn't necessarily have anyone around who could fly them. Remember, the United States and the NATO allies are not putting their own personnel on the, on the battlefield here or in the air. So um, it was critical that he get this going, even if those planes don't get delivered until next year. 
So why is the F-16 the Ukrainian fighter jet of choice? Well, it's their uh, jet of choice because it was designed to take on the Soviet and then Russian uh, militaries, more really the, the Russian military given uh, the age of, of the plane. Uh, but the concept here is that at some point this will move from being a trench war and an artillery war to back being an air war. And all of this right now is building towards this Ukrainian counteroffensive, which seems to be imminent. It's been imminent for a while now. And on that, here's President Zelensky. We really need some, some more time, not too much. We'll be ready, you know, in some time. I, I, I want to be very honest with you. I, I can't share with you some days. I, I just don't want to prepare, not, not for our friends. There are no secrets from our friends, but there are some secrets from, from our neighbors. Yeah, last week, he said they were waiting for more weapons, more ammunition, even taking that at face value. I mean, is there a risk here of drawing this out for too long? Uh, there is some risk in drawing it out. There are some people who believe, John, that the counteroffensive has already begun in a small way as the Ukrainians test some of the Russian lines. There is some belief that they have to figure out whether or not they're going to really try to retake Bakhmut, which right now is 90 percent controlled by the Russians, or whether they really focus their effort uh, elsewhere. There are a lot of American uh, military officials who believe Bakhmud was the long fight for them to expend energy in. But I think the, the real question underway here is, can he mount a counteroffensive that moves the needle enough that it actually does force the Russians to consider a negotiation to end this war? This was a remarkable sort of Europe, a diplomatic tour for Zelensky. You know, Paris, Rome, met with the Pope at the Vatican, off to Chequers in the UK. He was also in Berlin. And here's the Ukrainian president speaking on Sunday. I would like to thank you, Olive, totally, sincerely, and to the German people for every saved Ukrainian life due to your support. And he was thanking Germany for its biggest ever military aid package, almost $3 billion. That's a long way from the 5,000 helmets which Germany donated in the lead up to the war. So what does this aid package say about the role Germany wants to play now in terms of European security, as well as resetting relations with Kyiv? Well, the Germans would like you to believe that this was a fundamental turning point, And in many ways, it was for them. They made good on their commitment to... Uh, shut down uh, any imports from uh, Nord Stream 1 or Nord Stream 2 uh, if, um, uh, if the war broke out, if uh, uh, Putin went ahead and invaded Ukraine. They did that. Uh, then they got through this quite remarkable amount of aid. The question is, do they now use that moment to go rebuild their military, something that the Germans themselves have an allergy to, but the rest of the West does not seem to be as concerned uh, about. And of course, that goes back to all of the lessons from World War II. The other question is whether or not the Germans get aid fatigue, something that here in Washington is being discussed uh, as well. You have the far uh, right of the Republican Party and the far left of the Democratic Party agreeing for very different reasons that they do not uh, want to have significant new commitments to, uh, uh, to Ukraine. And we just don't know whether or not that's going to continue or not. It has been a lot of military aid, a lot of financial aid over the year or, year or so. Uh, David, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. Great to be with you.